Welcome back. Uh, this is our second experience in Life Together in Christ, a theme that we've been using by Ruth Haley Barton this summer. And I just want to thank you for joining us again for the second time in your small groups as we continue this theme together. So what I'd like to do um, is say it's great to be on this transformation journey with you and to give you time to pause the video for a moment and light your candle, take some time for silence and prayer together, and then we'll begin again. Our theme for this experience together is the nature of the spiritual journey but it's always good to begin with a prayer let us pray lord help us understand the nature of the spiritual journey in your name we pray amen for eight weeks during the summer we are focusing around the gospel story from luke 24 which is the walk to emmaus it's a beautiful story about two people uh, being interrupted by a stranger along the way and being invited into a deeper level of understanding God's presence in their lives. It's our hope that as we gather around tables across Columbus and Fall River and this general area, that as spiritual companions, we too will be ready to encounter Christ in our real life situations as well. Take time now to, to pause the video and read the entire story together. As you read the gospel together, I, I want to highlight two verses out of that gospel that are part of our focus for today. Verses 25 and 26. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? During moments of grieving with these two people on the walk to Emmaus, Jesus offers them two completely different sets of lenses to see or in which to view the death of Jesus. Ruth Haley Barton put it well when she said, the first lens Jesus offered was to draw attention to the nature of the spiritual journey, the paschal rhythm of death, burial, and resurrection as an essential rhythm of the spiritual life and of suffering as a necessary part of it. So I want to wrap our thoughts around the theme, was it not necessary? One of the most valuable offerings that we can make one another in a transforming community is this perspective that enables us to see through what is really going on, spiritually speaking, no matter how painful the events or experiences might be to affirm that God's at work, even in our suffering, that can be redemptive if we allow it to be. So I'll give you an example. Someone asked me a few weeks ago, Mark, when was the closest time you experienced God? And the first thing that came to mind was my bypass surgery five years ago. It was a moment in which all of the various things after my heart stopped, all the various things that worried me or things that I was clinging on to or worried about or had concerns of, all of a sudden just went out through the window. None of that mattered anymore. And when that bypass took place and the recovery during that time, though it was very hard, 
it led to all sorts of new avenues and new directions in my life. I couldn't see it then, but I see it now. Would I want to go back to that hard time? No. But would I trade it for anything in the world? No. It was a valuable time. It's actually the very time that brought me here to you, uh, to be a part of a renewal ministry, to be part of something new. It took me down new paths of spiritual direction and other avenues of learning as well. You know, I would not choose to go back, but when I look at what experiences that I've gone through, through the lens of what God was up to at that time, it offers me a whole new perspective. This is the place where God dwells uh, as the redeemed people. Often it's suffering, it initiates the necessary evacuations where Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Do you have a time where you felt closest to God? A moment you said, even though it was hard, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Take some time. Talk about it amongst yourself. I know the leaders of each of your groups have their own stories, but talk about it together. I have a fun story that I can tell you that comes out of my hiking in the Swiss Alps a couple weeks ago. It happened um, on Wednesday of the week. We were going through a pass and we had to climb about 3,500 feet, which took us four hours in the morning. Steep ascents, steep descents afterward. But it was one of those days that were, was very, very hard. And I remember just about the time that I could hear the beating of my heart in my ears and I just wanted to quit, one of the French guides would say, yeah, I think it's time that we take a rest. And I was so thankful for that. And after four hours, when we finally made the summit and we looked up over and we saw down at this beautiful glacier lake down at the bottom, it was a moment of satisfaction and fulfillment. And as we went down to the glacier lake to have our lunch, one of our newfound friends, her name is Karen. She's from Boston. She's part of a, a, a book club that happened to go on this hike together. Uh, you know how it is when you, you're really close to a destination like, and, and something happens? Well, we were so close to that picnic and she hit a stone and she went over and she hit her face right on the rocks without being able to break herself at all. So she, her nose hit first and when she got up, it was just off to the side and she was bleeding and it was swollen. And all of a sudden, the guides gathered around her and one of our other hikers, Leighton, grabbed his handkerchief from around his neck. Someone grabbed some snow and ice out of, the, out of the glacier and they began to pack her nose and others took care of her in a special way. It's a really hard day. But you know, at the end of the trip, when we look back on the trip, what was our best day? What was our favorite day? It was that day. One, it was hard, it was difficult, but it was memorable. And it was a day in which we had bonding around Karen. It was a time in which community started to come together. It was a time in which we were working together in a beautiful way. This rhythm that you're starting to see is the same kind of rhythm that we see in the spiritual journey as well. Ruth Haley Barton in Life Together in Christ has this wonderful piece on page 104. I want to read it to you because it has everything to do with what I'm talking about today. What Jesus did here, so few words could draw attention to the heart of the Christian story. To those who'd experienced the weekend's traumatizing events he was pointing out that they were not merely witnesses to terrible injustice. They were actually witnesses to the great saving act of God, accomplished in and through Jesus' suffering and the sacrifice of his life. In theory, this would have been a concept the disciples were familiar with since they were Jews. The word Paschal comes from the Hebrew Pesach, 
or Passover, alluding to the story of the Exodus in which the blood of the unblemished lamb was marked on the doorposts of the Israelites' home, prompting the angel of death to pass over them as it moved through the land of Egypt. The firstborn son of those who placed their trust in God by keeping the instruction lived. But the firstborn of those who did not died. The ability to trust God for their very lives, symbolized by this action, became such a defining characteristic of the Jewish people that they reenacted, they celebrated, they celebrated annually to this day. As important as the first Passover in Jewish history, it was also a foreshadowing of the coming of Christ, who is our perfect unblemished Passover lamb. In the same way that the blood of the Passover lamb protected the Israelites' household from certain death, Jesus covers us, protects us, and brings us about our salvation. And in his death, he modeled for us the laying down of that which is temporal in order to gain that which is eternal. The part about the reading that I just shared with you highlights two things about the nature of the spiritual journey. One is trust, and the second one is surrender. The goal of the Christian journey is surrender. It's that ability to trust God with our whole selves, and our very lives rather than our own attempts at safety and security, affection and approval, power and control for ourselves on our own terms. The rhythm between now of living primarily out of false patterns and the not yet of living in our true self in God, our spiritual journey, we are molded and equipped by many mixed experiences, especially our struggling and suffering. Our suffering awakens us to the fact that we rely on and we many times attach ourselves to those things that are not of God. Our suffering helps us to detach from those false things and to rely on God and to become morally, more clearly convinced that God still loves us and still guides us and still cares for us. My example is after my bypass surgery. It was a letting go. It was a detaching. It was a total reliance and surrender on something greater than myself. This season of the spiritual journey can feel kind of like a death because something really is saying the false self is falling away and the true self in God can now emerge more fully. Take some time and I want you to talk about our congregation faith for a little bit. Where are we on this continuum of the Paschal life of suffering death or passing over to the new life? In the transitions of renewal and transformation come moments of little deaths and letting go of what was to what can become. Where do you see that happening in our congregation or if you can't answer that one, where do you see it happening in your own life? Returning two weeks ago from France, I was thinking about a French hymn, and actually this story, this um nature of the spiritual journey is a part of July 29th's worship service. So I selected the hymn that I thought would work really well on this Sunday. It's called, Lord Jesus, You Shall Be My Song. It's done in French for the first verse and then English for the next four. It's right out of our hymn book. It's one of the most pretty. It's really a song of surrender, and it's a song about being on a journey, but it's also a song about trusting. It is the nature of the spiritual journey. Listen to the words. Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. I'll tell everyone about you wherever I go. You alone are our life and our peace and our love. Lord Jesus, you shall be my song 
as I journey. Lord Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. May all my joy be a faithful reflection of you. May the earth and the sea and the sky join my song. Lord Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. As long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant to carry your cross and to share all your burdens and fears. For you save me by giving your body and blood. As long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant. I fear in the dark and the doubt of my journey, but courage will come with the sound of your steps by my side. And with all of the family you save by your love, will sing to your dawn at the end of our journey. Thank you for journeying with us on this was it necessary, wasn't it necessary moment of talking about the nature of the spiritual journey. Close your time together now with a bit of prayer and conversation. Thanks for joining me this week. Goodbye.